The talk today is on the topic of direct distillation of language model alignment. This project was led by Lewis Tunstall and Edward Beeching. It was done at Hugging Face with a large collection of folks. The work today really connects to the open source large language model community. And as such, it was really building on the work of many, many different open source projects, which I'll hope to call out throughout the talk. For the last year, we've seen the release of a large number of very powerful open source language models. In this talk, we'll primarily focus on 7 billion parameter models, which are some of the smaller models that still exhibit some of the impressive properties of large language models. One challenge with these models is that when they're released, they're released as raw language models. And when you try to run them on basic academic benchmarks, they don't perform that well out of the box. Researchers showed that through a method generally known as self-instruct, you could use better closed source language model to produce instructions that could help these models perform better on these tasks. This method generally goes by the name self-instruct, and we'll use an example from a system known as UltraChat that produces a strong self-instruct dataset. The way it works is that you first collect a seed set. The seed set consists of a large set of different topics that you'd like your language model to perform well on. This might be collected from Wikipedia or for having a large language model just generate a large set of topics. You then use the language model to filter this grouping to a diverse set of relevant questions. These questions act as the opening lines in a simulated dialogue. In this dialogue, you have a large language model play both the questioner and the respondent. You have the language model go back and forth and have several turns where it discusses the topic of interest. Very quickly, researchers figured out that if they use these self-instruct datasets, they could then train one of these open sourced raw large language models to perform well on general instructions. This idea, which I'll call instruction distillation, works by constructing one of these datasets and simply using supervised fine tuning to have the small open source language model learn from one of these powerful models like ChatGPT. However, while this instruction tuning and instruction distillation seems to improve the way the models work on some of the basic academic benchmarks, it's less good at working on some of the harder chat benchmarks. In particular, you can see that hard questions with strange instructions are difficult for language models to answer and don't seem to improve much from instruction fine tuning. The literature on large language models argues that it's necessary to collect human feedback in order to improve this problem, which is known as language model alignment. Models like ChatGPT utilize a large set of human feedback, which is collected after the model is instruction tuned. Open source models like LlamaChat attempt to replicate this process, but the data they use and the human feedback itself is not made available with the model. If we are going to align open source models in a generic way, we're going to need a different strategy. The most compelling idea is to instead use AI feedback. Just like with self-instruct, the main idea here is to actually run a generic large language model and try to use its outputs in place of human data collection. We'll follow a data set known as ultra feedback. The way this data set works is you, again, collect a large amount of prompts, such as describe how to make chocolate brownies. From this prompt, you then collect four different responses from four different large language models. We then utilize GPT-4 to tell us which of these responses was the best. We call this response the winner and the others the loser. Another method that is perhaps even simpler is to utilize the same samples and generate the same responses from different language models. But then just decide that whatever, say, GPT-4 outputs is always the winner and what LlamaChat outputs is always the loser. This sounds a bit silly, but it seems to work well in practice. The second practical issue is how to actually utilize this data to improve the language model. Unlike with self-instruct, we couldn't just supervise fine tune on these outputs because the data is in the form of preferences as opposed to full outputs. This problem is referred to as aligning the model to the feedback and can be represented probabilistically as a preference model where we just want to rank the winning output better than the losing output. Work by OpenAI has popularized a method known as PPO as a way of aligning these models to feedback. 
This is a powerful approach, but it's also quite complex. There are a lot of heroic examples in the last couple of years of grad students or other open source researchers who have heroically tried to reconstruct the exact details of the PPO algorithm. In the spirit of simplicity, we're going to go with an approach that avoids much of the complexity of PPO and reinforcement learning. To first approximation, we are going to do gradient descent on an objective that upweights the winning examples and downweights the losing ones. The objective we'll use is known as direct preference optimization, or DPO for short. It can be summarized by the math on this slide, which represents the objective function we are trying to optimize. Let's break down this equation into the important parts. First, note that we're optimizing over our policy pi. This represents the new language model we are trying to learn. The optimization first samples a prompt x and two responses, the winning response, which is good, and the losing response, which is bad. The objective itself is made up of two terms. The first term is applied to the good response, yw. The term here consists of the log ratio of the new language model pi divided by the base language model that we started with. The second term consists of the same ratio, but now applied to the losing response. The full objective tells us to maximize the difference between these two terms, that is, upweight the good examples and downweight the bad examples. The additional coefficient beta represents how close we want our new model to stay to the base model. We can summarize the whole optimization process in three steps. We first sample a good and bad pair. We then run the base model on these two examples and save the score that it gave them. We then run our new model on these two examples and backprop through this loss function. While this is a little bit more complex than standard language model fine tuning, it doesn't require any sampling or really any of the tricks that you might be used to with RL. You can really just implement this in PyTorch and backprop through the Py model directly. Okay, let me summarize the entire process that we're proposing. We're going to assume that we got a very powerful open source raw language model online. The first thing we'll do is we'll generate multi-turn AI dialogues through self-instruct. We'll call this step instruction distillation. We can then train on these generated dialogues to produce a strong instruction model. The second step is to collect a large set of AI feedback data. This can be done with a process like ultra feedback, where we sample prompts and then have different language models generate responses. Of these responses, we pick winners and losers, either by using a heuristic or by writing a model like GPT-4 to choose which output it likes the best. In the final step, we run DPO. In this case, we'll call it distilled DPO because we're running on a data set of AI-generated feedback. This step consists of maximizing the objective that we saw on the previous slide. In practice, again, this can be done with standard PyTorch calls, simply computing the scores for the winner and loser with the base model, as well as the new model that we are optimizing. In our work, we applied this process to produce a new model, which we call Zephyr 7b. The way this worked is that we started with the Mistral 7b model, which at the time of writing was the best 7 billion parameter model available. We then trained this model using this DPO distillation process from AI feedback. Our training was based on the ultra chat and ultra feedback datasets. To evaluate this model, we both used LM as evaluator approaches, as well as human judgment. Our first set of experiments is on MT Bench. This is an open source evaluation framework that uses a GPT model to rate the responses from different language models. In these experiments, we found that our approach, Zephyr 7b, was able to significantly beat every other 7 billion parameter model in terms of MT Bench score. We also found that it was able to beat many other models of larger size simply by utilizing our instruction followed by DPO style training. It is still significantly far behind some of the proprietary models, but it's doing very well for a 7 billion parameter model. We can dive into some of the details about what it gets right and what it's still struggling with. 
We see that on topics like humanities, writing, and role-playing, that Zephyr 7 billion is very close to some of the more powerful models. It still struggles with areas like reasoning and math and coding, where it gets close to some of the other proprietary approaches, but is pretty far behind models like GPT-4. We also evaluated on Alpaca eval. This evaluation works by comparing the output of various LLMs to a relatively bad baseline chatbot. From these results, we again see that Zephyr 7 billion is better than many smaller models, and almost equals the performance of even models up to 33 billion parameters. It's relatively competitive on these benchmarks, even to some of the proprietary language models. You should take all of these LM as evaluator approaches with somewhat of a grain of salt. It's possible that some of these models are adapting to the actual structure of the evaluation, as opposed to simply producing better responses. However, there are now approaches that will actually use human evaluation to compare the output of models. And we found that when Zephyr 7b was actually shown to human judges, it significantly outperformed other 7 billion parameter models and many models of larger sizes. The ELO rating on the LMSYS human eval shows that the model is actually quite strong in practice. I guess another way to judge the impacts of these models is how they actually get utilized. About a week after releasing this version of the Zephyr model, it was put in production at the startup U.com as part of their search experience. One thing that's neat about the open LLM community is that these ideas get tried really quickly in practice. The folks at AI2 have already released a 70 billion parameter model trained with roughly the same distilled DPO objective. Their model is known as Tulu2. In this model, they use Llama2 70 billion which is one of the best 70 billion parameter open models. And they train with roughly the same procedure and data set as Zephyr. Here again, we're using LM as evaluator methods to look at its results. Tulu2, which is shown as green here, performs extremely well. It basically gets uh, one of the highest scores on the MT bench benchmark, as well as Alpaca eval. This shows that the benefits of scaling to a larger model don't uh, preclude the benefits that we get from this AI feedback-based training. Another result comes from Intel, who produced a model known as NeuralChat, which is ranked at the top of some of the LLM-based leaderboards. The NeuralChat approach is the one I mentioned earlier, where they use a form of DPO and AI feedback that simply assumes the answers that come from GPT-4 are preferred to answers that come from Llama. This is a very easy way to create a pretty good AI feedback data set from almost any prompts. The neural chat model is a very advanced instruction tune model that's gone through several versions of using some of the best instruction prompts. Even from this very strong instruction tuned baseline, they still see an improvement from additionally including DPO based training from AI feedback. Even just today, we've seen new models being released where people apply this DPO idea on top of already very strong models. In particular, this neural Hermes model was just released, and it shows that using DPO with Intel's dataset gives improvement over one of the best models on the open LLM leaderboard. In fact, if we look at the top five models currently leading the open LLM leaderboard, all five of them are using some form of DPO or the ultra feedback data set in order to get strong results. So this method seems to hold up in practice. So in conclusion, this version of distilled DPO seems to be a pretty nice addition to the open LLM toolkit. We've seen major advances in the construction of these synthetic AI feedback data sets. These new data sets paired with simpler methods for preference optimization like DPO makes it really easy for basically anyone with compute to distill new preferences into their model. We've also seen that with the large open LLM community, these ideas spread very quickly and people are able to try them and scale them really in a matter of weeks. To help facilitate this process, uh, the team I work with at Hugging Face has released a repo known as the Alignment Handbook. Uh, I'll post a link at the bottom of the video. It shows all the code for these methods and it really 
corresponds to very little additional code to your system. Um, so if you're interested in these kind of approaches, check them out. And if you're a researcher, I think there's a lot of interesting questions involved in these challenges. Thanks so much.